Hey guys, it's Bear. It's Friday, May 25th, and I wanted to um, address something that, you know, I, I've come across a lot of cis people saying um, online, and it was said to me yesterday in conversation with somebody that I, I really do admire, and I was, I was turning to them, you know, or reconnecting with them after a while, um, and they said some things that, you know, kind of put me off a little bit, and it's something that really hasn't been said to my face too much. I didn't get a lot of resistance when I came out as transgender, and, um, you know, uh, I had some people that, like, stopped speaking to me, which I think is really strange. Um, like, if you've got a problem, talk, ask questions, you know, seek education, that's what I do. Um, but not everybody's like me, so that's fine. You know, it, it, it hurts uh, to get rejected like that, but you move on with your life, you know. Um, so, yeah, I haven't had too many people kind of just be abrasive about my transition. And this wasn't so much said to me in an abrasive way, just kind of like, you know, during conversation, it just kind of came up. So some things that cis people are curious about or say or are confused about. Uh, one of them is, you know, uh, this person that I was talking to kind of just was like, well, I have a, a, a real problem with how people just wake up one day and decide that they feel like, you know, the opposite gender. And it's like, okay, I understand that you don't understand the trans brain because you identify with with your birth sex but the man that's not how it works that's not that's not how any of this works you know you don't just wake up one day and be like well you know what i feel like you know putting on a dress from now on um what no okay so the way this works for some people you know or the way it worked for me is that you're struggling with these feelings for a long, long time. And, you know, you're sitting there watching the people around you not struggling with these feelings, and so you feel like something is wrong with you. Um, and, you know, most people, when they feel like something is wrong with them, they don't confront it right away. They, they try to just kind of push it aside and, and, and cover it up, and it's called denial, all right? Even a lot of times you'll talk to somebody who's got a nagging health problem, and you're like, hey, man, why don't you go to the doctor, you know? And they're like, well, I, they're afraid. They're afraid of knowing what they've got, you know? And, and this works very much the same way. You're scared that something is wrong with you. You are abnormal. You are not like you know, the majority of people, you know, being trans is definitely not the, ma the majority. The majority of people out there are cisgender, you know. For whatever reason, some of us just don't identify with our birth gender. And, and I'm not going to get into the science behind that, but there is science behind that, and we are coming to understand it more and more. Not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to let you know that I didn't wake up one day and decide that I feel like a man. And anybody that has known me for a long, long time can tell you that I was not gender conforming uh, when I was back, like, before I came out. You know, I, w I was not, like, running around in, um, you know, showing off the, the female body, showing off my breasts, which were fairly large for my size, I think. You know, they made me very uncomfortable. I never wanted to wear low-cut or tight shirts or anything like that. You know, uh, I cut my hair short when I was, like, 19, and I never went back. All right. Um, so I didn't know what the word was. I didn't know what trans was. Um, or I probably would have come out uh, a lot, a lot earlier. Um, I didn't know what HRT was. I didn't know that you could get on testosterone and have your voice drop and grow facial hair or get top surgery. I didn't know all of those things. When I started to discover all those things, that's when it started to click. And I started to feel like, okay, this is, this is not what's 
quote unquote wrong with me, but this is what I am, and there's something that I can do about it. There's quote unquote a cure. You know, if you want to talk about this as you know, um, like a, a, a health problem, you know, uh, there's a cure. It's called transitioning. And that doesn't ne- mean that you need to get on hormones or you need to have any kind of surgeries in order to, tr- to transition. A lot of people just socially transition. You know, they'll put on a binder or dress differently and ask people like, hey, call me different pronouns, call me a different name, you know, and that's totally, totally fine. But nobody just wakes up one day and and decides that this is, you know, um, like a a life path that they're going to take. It's it's a very difficult, very painful process uh, emotionally and physically. So... Um, I think what may be confusing, though, is that a lot of people do go the other direction from what I did. I, I became more and more gender nonconforming, more and more masculine over time. I liked it, and then I finally came out as, as trans and started my hormones. I think um, some people, and I, and I don't know the numbers on this, and I don't care, they, they go the opposite way, which is where they, they try really hard to conform to society's viewpoints of their, their birth gender. And so you have people who will be very girly or who will be, you know, for male to female trans people, they'll be very masculine. And they're trying really hard to stay in the closet and stay in denial, you know, in their own head um, and trying to convince society that they are, quote unquote, a normal, you know, man or woman. And, uh, and I think those are the people who surprise people when they come out. You know, nobody in my life was surprised, you know, um, it, they were like, oh, yeah, you're a dude. You know, like, do you want me to start calling you male pronouns? You know, I didn't, yeah, nobody's confused. So I th- I think that's uh, where that comes from, where people are like, oh, you just, like, woke up one day and decided, like, you wanted me to call you a man's name. Mm, okay. No. Moving on, though, um, the... The opposite thing was said to me in the same conversation, and this is where you start to get into just conflicting viewpoints and, you know, people that are just kind of confused about the whole thing. And that's, uh, well, you know, you also have little kids who tell people that they're, you know, the opposite gender, and little kids are too young to know. And it's like, no, man, I knew, I was saying this stuff when I was like four years old. I, I remember people, like adults, asking me what I wanted to be when I grow up. And I would say a boy. And I remember people being kind of like put off or confused by that. You know, especially because that was the 80s. That was, you know, 35 some odd years ago uh, when, again, we didn't really know what trans was. You know, and again, you know, I'll remind you that the 80s was when we were going through the AIDS crisis and people were just downright scared of um, their kids being like gay. You know, so I'm not going to get into my personal like experiences around that because that's a whole other topic of turmoil but yeah little kids are are starting to um discover and learn their own identities you know they're absorbing everything kids are like sponges they're absorbing everything about the world around them you know and they're seeing male figures they're seeing female figures they're seeing role models from either gender you know when i was growing up i found role models in many male figures, you know, uh, teachers and, you know, uh, my parents, friends, relatives, stuff like that. I didn't, I'm not going to say I didn't respect, uh, female elders, but I didn't look at them and say, that's what I want to be. You know, that's, that's the kind of person I want to be when I, when I grow up, you know, they were all male. You know, and the styles of clothing and the way of wearing your hair and stuff like that. I looked again at males, you know, and I was like, I don't want to wear frilly, pretty things, um, and I don't want to put on makeup. I remember that being a real struggle, you know, um, around like social stuff, uh, was how to do my hair and how to do, you know, my makeup. I, I hated it. I hated it. I would, I actually didn't ever willingly put on makeup. You know, I did it a couple of times for, um, like, school functions, and I remember just crying, period. Uh, So I looked at 
the guys at functions wearing like you know a collared shirt and a tie and I was like oh that looks good that's what I want to wear that that makes me feel sharp you know and even back before I came out I would do that I would put on a button down shirt and wear a tie you know to like somebody else's graduation and I got a lot of comments about it and it was it was hurtful and it was confusing it was like no this is my expression you know this is what makes me feel good and sharp and dapper you know and I, I love that I love looking sharp and looking dapper um, and so here I am four year, just about four years into my transition because it was summer of 2014 when I came out, and it's it's May of 2018, um, and you know when I go out or when I go to functions or whatever, I'm likely to be there in a button-down shirt and a tie, uh, possibly a vest or a jacket, and I don't really care if other people aren't going dressed that way. That's that's what makes me feel good. I like feeling good about my appearance, and that's what makes me feel good. So backtrack you know little kids do that too you know there's a moment when people start letting their kids like choose their own clothes and, and put on their own like put together their own little outfits and stuff you're letting them discover their identity you know even if like they're wearing two different shoes I saw a kid at a function the other night wearing two completely different shoes well guess what his parents let him do that and like put on his own outfit that he felt good about you know He's learning. He's discovering. You know? So don't tell me. Don't tell me that kids are too young to know anything about gender identity and gender conformity. You know, when you put a little kid into a little girl into a dress and she screams and cries because she wants to wear, you know, overalls, you know, and whatever. Like, that kid... <laughs> That, that kid understands. You know, they just don't know the words for it. And when they start to discover the words for it, kids are pretty vocal about it. You know, and anybody that's telling you otherwise is in denial. They're lying to themselves. And they're lying to the world around them. Kids, kids understand. Alright, so... Just... Yeah, that's, that's some thoughts for, for anybody who doesn't understand what somebody else is going through uh, or anybody who is struggling to express to others what they're going through that's that's how it works you know um, we we vocalize it we have people tell us that that's wrong and bad and weird and so we shut it down and we go into denial and we go into the closet that's why it's still called coming out you know just like coming out about your sexuality you know, we're in the closet before we come out as transgender and ask for people to change their pronouns, you know, our, our, our pronouns, and, you know, ask them to call us a preferred name. So, some thoughts for your Friday. Hope you guys have a good weekend.